Every time I move, my hair just turns into a giant poof ball. Hey guys, what's up? I hope you're doing well. Today, I'm gonna be trying a brand new product to me. It's actually not new at all, Posca pens. I'm gonna be giving my first impressions, doing a little review and some artwork. They are a Japanese paint marker. I can't read basically anything on here except for Uni Posca and 12 colors. Probably somewhere on here it says do not eat, but I don't know. I've heard so many great things about these, especially from Casey Golden. There's definitely a lot more colors and variety of sizes. So like line thickness, um, brush tip, not brush, do they have brush tips? Tip sizes, these are 0.7. I just have one pack for now because they are kind of pricey. I got these on Amazon. They don't have coupons there, but if I really happen to like them, I'll definitely get more packs. My desk is kind of a mess. I still have all my Sharpie challenge stuff here. So if you haven't checked that video out yet, I'll put the link below and in the iCard in the corner up there. I'm just gonna brush this stuff all aside. I'm gonna sweep it away. I'm like sliding off this chair and I have these tiny hands in the comment section below if you're interested let me know what I should do with these like what type of DIY what type of drawing or if you have another idea they're really funny <laughs> they're only sealed with one piece of clear tape plus otherwise it just takes so long to open things nowadays but every single marker is individually wrapped which is a good thing but it's also inconvenient for getting started This is a pretty thin tip, so this is gonna be great for detailing. I'm gonna have to do kind of a smaller piece. I wasn't expecting them to be quite this fine. I have hair in my mouth. Definitely didn't feel like opening all of these quite yet because for the first impression, I mean, I just need to use one of them, right? So you just shake it a little bit, press it down, and oh my gosh, it's so smooth. I wasn't expecting it to be this nice. Whoa, I'm super impressed. It's so smooth. Very pigmented, no odor, which I love when something does not smell like a Sharpie. Sorry, Sharpie. These are a zero headache risk, which is great, but they are definitely a higher price point. Oh yeah. I was just testing these on Bristol paper, which is basically like a watercolor paper thickness, but without the texture, so it's smooth but it's also a little bit thicker than cardstock. I also have this sheet of really scrappy computer copy paper and it works basically the same as it does on the Bristol. So you don't really have to worry about the type of paper you use. It doesn't bleed through at all, even though the paper is really thin, you can see it through, so it ghosts a little bit. This is Sharpie on this side and this definitely, you can like kind of see it bleed through a little bit. The Posca pen does not bleed at all. If you're working in a sketchbook, then that is something that you definitely want to be aware of. Here I'm going to be comparing the Posca paint pen to a Sharpie paint pen and a Craftsmart one. I do want to point out that Posca is a water-based paint pen while the other two are oil-based, but I still want to do this comparison. My Sharpie is kind of low on juice, but I think this is a fair representation of how it works. Also Sharpie's smell, but Craftsmart smells even worse it smells so bad not dissing the product because it does work well on glass and plastic and any other thing that you want to do it's not the greatest on paper though as you can see posca is the most bold and vivid on paper so it's the most pigmented black it's very dark here's a chart with swatches from all 12 colors that came in my set so as you can see they work great on white paper but what about black <laughs> Why did my voice just get so high and cracky there? So they do show up on black paper, which is definitely a plus. On camera, it's actually looking more pigmented and more bright than it actually does in person for whatever reason. I really don't have the saturation bumped up on this. I just had to color correct a little bit because black paper on a white background, the contrast is just really hard on cameras to like fix the white balance. So I don't know. I don't think that I like overcorrected anything, but I will say that in person, this is even deceiving because it just doesn't show up this vivid in person even. My eyes don't think so anyway. And you can tell that some colors do show up more bright than others. So the yellow is a lot more dull. Initially, I had intended to create an entire Zentangle piece out of these on the black paper. They just aren't showing up enough 
uh, to my liking. So I am going to move on, but here is, like I said, the test, just so you can see that they do show up on colored paper. So mixed media wise, and I really just mean different types of drawing mediums and paint here. I'm showing you that Posca pens can go over colored pencil, Sharpie marker, and acrylic paint. Now the Crayola marker, as you can see, it kind of bled into the white tip of the Posca pen and it kind of blends together. It doesn't show up as a true white on the blue turquoise marker. So this actually could be something that you do to mix colors and blend them if you wanted to. The second piece of art that I do in this video is actually going to be combined elements of colored pencil and Posca pens, so definitely stay tuned for that if you want to see how I combine things in an art piece. Moving on to the doodle, I did this swirly type of ice cream cone. It's a little bit surreal because the swirls wouldn't actually look like that coming out of the machine, like realistically, but we're using some creative uh, interpretation here. So the first thing I did is I made the pencil lines lighter by just going over that with an eraser very carefully. And now I'm just going to ink the entire thing with Posca pens. So I'm not doing any type of other material in this. I wanna show you what Posca pens on their own are capable of doing. I have a color pattern going with the quote unquote swirls of the ice cream here. So I just did every third little teardroppy shape purple and then I'm putting pink and blue obviously. After outlining I am going back in and coloring everything in one color at a time. I just found that that's the easiest way to like not mess anything up. So while you're watching me color this in I do want to just go over how I'm feeling about these. They're really smooth like I mentioned while my face was on camera. I was really excited about that. I still am. I really like the texture of these markers. They just glide across the page. So you may notice here that a little bit of the ink did get outside of the lines. Now this isn't because my hand just slipped outside and I messed up. It's actually because while the ink or the paint of the pen is still wet, if you color back and forth and go too fast or too hard, it actually splatters with the tip. So the tip will splatter the ink outside. This doesn't happen very often, but it is better from my just limited experience so far if you color in one direction. Yeah, not the band. That's probably the only downfall I've noticed to these so far, aside from them being pretty expensive. And it's not like one pack is really expensive, but I want all the colors and all the thicknesses. So share this video. No, I'm just kidding. But I mean, any if you want to. Now I'm moving on to the cone. And I again am outlining the detailed areas first. So I'm outlining around the bottom of the swirl ice cream. I do wish that I had a light tan or some other coney color, more coney color, but I'm doing yellow here. I'm also trying to color a certain way, so I'm doing all diagonal lines for the cone, and this is what it turned out like, just so it doesn't look too messy. I don't know, sometimes you can see the lines after they dry, like after you overlap marker, um, it'll, you know what I'm trying to say? It sometimes just looks messy if you color going different ways, so try and keep it all one one lane. Stay in your lane, marker. Stay in your lane. Now, if this were a marker piece or a colored pencil piece, even a crayon piece, I would just go over the outline with the same color most likely to build up that shade and make it deeper, but that doesn't work with paint pens. These are one color, one shade. You can't go over these and change the tone. It is what it is. What you see is what you get. So I am going around the yellow cone with a brown outline and I'm being very, very careful here. I'm making these lines so slowly, but it pays off. Otherwise they'd be really wonky and wavy, even though I still kind of did mess up. But this is something I wanna show you that the markers are 
very forgiving as long as you don't go out into the white area that is so if your mess ups are inside in the colored area so for instance i thought that that brown line was a little bit too thick for my liking i went over it with the yellow paint pen after it dried of course you want to go over your mistakes after giving drying time it goes right over and fixes that up like it never happened so it does depend on the colors that you use when you make a mistake it won't be a hundred percent if you're trying to cover let's say black with white you'll probably still see the black through it'll peek through but with all the colors on top the pink blue and purple I did make quite a few little tiny mistakes and I had to go over parts of that and they covered up really well so now I'm taking a black Posca pen the black Posca pen the only one that I have and I'm going around the outline of the ice cream and finally I'm going to add white sprinkles I didn't want to make this too crazy and add like lime green and orange and everything it would just clash so they're all white I think it turned out really cute in the comment section below let me know what your favorite ice cream flavor is now let's move on to this piece which is a little bit more detailed i'm going to use even more colors in this one and i'm going to combine this piece with colored pencil and black fine liner again i don't know how i end up drawing so dark with the pencil i always tell myself to push really lightly but then it ends up just being still too dark so i went over that with the eraser and just doled that down and even though the paper is white it's kind of an off-white and more of a cool tone than the posca pen so i am coloring the entire unicorn body in with the white posca pen if i didn't do this it just wouldn't look finished i don't like having blank paper spots i don't know it just looks like i forgot to color something in so then I moved on to outlining the mane, the magical, flowy, colorful hair. I chose four colors for this instead of doing six. I just excluded orange and yellow. I used the same four colors here and then carefully colored everything in. I did, of course, make some mistakes and had to wait for the color to dry and then I went over that with the other one. I don't think I showed that on camera at this point, but it happened, so keep that in mind. If I were using Crayola markers here or Sharpie or Copics even, like if you go out of the lines, that's it for the most part. But yeah, with these, you can cover up mistakes, so that's definitely a plus. So now we're bringing in the orange for the horn and the yellow for the hooves and the little snout muzzle I don't know what is that called on a horse that is why I kept these two colors out of the hairy spots of the unicorn and keep in mind that the Posca pens don't blend so I did leave some space inside the horn to put a few colors of colored pencil I'm using Prismacolor they're my favorite and then I wanted the unicorn to appear more bold and have a very high contrast between the unicorn and the background so I chose to again use colored pencils for the clouds and I'm also coloring those in. I was just really itching to do some blending because I'm just, I'm not used to not blending. I like blending and like making gradients and everything. So I did make the outlines of the clouds darker and then tried to fade that into a lighter tint of the colors so here's what the clouds turned out like and I chose not to outline with the black Posca pen because the tip was a little bit too thick I didn't want really wide outlines so I went on over to my extra small very fine tip Faber-Castell fine liner and I used that to ink the eyeball and all around every single outline that you can see I did except for the ones um, connecting the hooves to the legs I didn't think that those required an outline. I just thought those should blend into the body as well as the nose uh, face area. So now I have all the inking done, all the outlining, and the final steps I'm taking are a very light, like sky blue color colored pencil. I'm using that to cover the entire background just so it's not white. I wanted there to be a little bit of color difference between the unicorn and the sky. And I also decided to go back in with some Posca pens and make some rainbow colored stars and then I put little white dots to just have like little glimmers of starriness as well. This piece I want to say, I don't know, probably took me three-ish hours total from sketch to finish. I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out. It's a little bit different from what I normally do, but I think it's cool.
I post a brand new video on my channel every single Friday and I'm trying to get back into two times a week. If you enjoyed this one, please give it a big thumbs up to let me know. And I'm gonna put a couple other videos here. So if you haven't seen these yet and they look interesting, please check them out. I'll list more in the description box below along with the iCard up here. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I'll see you in my next video soon. Bye.